Hi, everyone. It's Joe Venary, the host of Fit Insider, the show where I talk with the entrepreneurs, executives, and investors who are redefining the business of fitness and wellness. Today, I'm joined by PJ Nestler. PJ is the Director of Performance at XPT Life, a performance lifestyle system developed by Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese. In today's episode, we discuss the breath, movement, and recovery methods used at XPT, the rise of the high-performance lifestyle, and how XPT has used retreats, coaching certifications, and its consumer app to grow the brand. Let's get into it. Hey, PJ, welcome to Fit Insider. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. And just to kick things off and give listeners a little bit of context, can you tell us about XPT and how you got involved? Absolutely. XPT is really the culmination of the professional and, and also just the lives of Laird Hamilton and Gabby Reese. And it really, it's, it's been the 30 years of exploration of them looking at ways to achieve peak performance, but then also just overall fitness and how they look at holistic fitness and life. Uh, and it was just kind of the way that they trained and it, it evolved through the curiosity and ex- exploration of, of uh, a lot of Laird and Gabby, and then gradually just transitioned into a business where they started inviting people out to spend a few days with them in Malibu and uh, taking them through all of the things that they do from a fitness perspective or a performance perspective. And that's, that's kind of how XPT evolved and was started uh, was just these three day retreats that people would come out and get plugged into Laird and Gabby's lifestyle, which is the XPT lifestyle. And then how do you fit into that mix? I mean, obviously they, um, Laird being a, you know, big wave surfer and certainly having kind of like a a storied history when you look into him, uh, Gabby as well, an accomplished athlete. Um, you obviously have a background in all types of training across different athletes and modalities. Um, how did those paths intersect? Yeah, well then they, they were sort of running retreats, I believe 2015 or beginning of 2016. And at the time I was a sports performance coach. I spent the first, uh, I spent 12 years of my career training athletes in the collegiate setting and in the private setting, uh, and then graduating into management roles. I started managing a handful of sports performance facilities, uh, and I really had a passion for education. So I started, I actually left the companies I was working for in 2017 and started my own business that was geared towards trainer education. And I was developing mentorships and curriculums to help guide personal trainers, fitness professionals through their journey and help them understand um, the ins and outs of the entire business. And at the time, uh, XPT had just brought in some investors and they were positioning to help XPT scale from the retreat business that it was into uh, bringing uh, bringing all the, the modalities that they were teaching at XPT into more of a curriculum and a structure. So it just happened that I connected with one of the investors, uh, um, one of the co-founders of of FitLab, the the, uh, company that I work for. And because I had been building all these things at the time for my own business, and this is what they were looking at XPT, it was just a really good timing. And uh, I got introduced to Laird and Gabby. Uh, They put me through the ringer in, in all the XPT modalities up in Laird's backyard, which was scary, but also really exciting. And, um, was just very fortunate that the timing worked out and they, what they were looking to do was something that I found was a really good skill set of mine and a passion of mine. So I was fortunate to jump in with them, uh, in the middle of 2017. Yeah, it's awesome story. And just to dig in a little bit, you mentioned Fit Lab there, kind of like an investor and holding company for a bunch of different fitness concepts, um, Freeletics, XPT, involvement with uh, Mayweather Boxing as well. Um, and you kind of have a role that spans some of those different training modalities and brands. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit, how you're involved and maybe even what your day to day looks like? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fit Lab. I believe XPT was actually the first investment for FitLab. And when I was originally hired, I was hired by FitLab, but my primary role was 100% XPT uh, and helping to build that. And since then, we've we've added a few other brands to the portfolio and and I was um, promoted into the senior director of performance for FitLab. So I still have a a major role in XPT, but outside of that, I also help uh, oversee the entire performance arm of FitLab. So I have a team of other coaches that help to, as we partner with some of these other iconic athletes or brands and help them build the 
the fitness business behind it. Uh, my job is really to connect with the different coaches or the athlete, similar to what I did at XPT, uh, and help to take the authenticity of the training that they do or what they believe is unique to their perspective on fitness, and then translate that into a consumer friendly model through digital and physical uh, studios as well as digital apps. Yeah. And kind of pivoting back to XPT a little bit, we talked about it as the the convergence of um, Laird and Gabby's years of training and just what they were into and how they, you know, kind of led their lives from a performance perspective. And there's lots of things that go into it. Um, The idea of optimization, recovery, breath work, um, but just what does that all encompassing look like? So what, what is the XPT protocol? What all is involved with that? Yeah, the real, what we tell tell people at XPT is our, our ultimate mission is to help people become the most versatile and resilient human beings possible. And that's rooted in really the belief that, that Laird and Gabby have. I mean, if you look at the pursuit of Laird Hamilton, it's always been about conquering the next obstacle, finding the next thing that's going to push him into unlocking his true potential. And for Laird, that's pretty extreme because he's surfing 100 foot waves. He's jumping out of helicopters and heli skiing, you know, he's doing those kind of extreme things. But the reality is the way he approaches fitness, I'll use the term fitness or health. uh, And the way both of them approach it is removing limitations, whether those are physical or mental limitations. And usually it's the synergy of both uh, removing those limitations to ultimately be as versatile as possible and then resilient no matter what they face. And that kind of underpins everything that they do at XPT, as well as the curiosity for what the next thing is that's going to drive their performance. So when you look at some of the modalities in XPT, the the philosophy is really breathe, move, and recover. And those are kind of the three cornerstones of the philosophy of training for XPT. But uh, so breathing being the foundation of everything that we do and I think one of the most powerful, impactful things that that we do at XPT, because it not only is it the most impactful, but it, it literally can impact everybody. So it it goes across every demographic, across every uh, training goal, the breath can really connect to that. And that's been something that's been uh, really amazing for me to to dig into and to learn. Uh, And then we have obviously our movement philosophy, which comes into all of the physical exercise And then the recovery aspect of it, which I think is a huge missing component in fitness today, as as we've seen the huge rise in high intensity training uh, over the past 10, 15 years, um, we're now seeing a lot of people who are fitness minded, who are broken and beat up and not realizing that there's another component to really tying this thing together to allow them to, to achieve high performance or, uh, and what we term high performance or extreme performance which is really helping people to achieve the highest level of performance in whatever area that is to them. So I think a lot of people hear that term performance, especially me coming from the world of sports performance, where we're thinking about, does this NFL player perform on the field? Uh, But in reality, most of the people that we work with performance to them may just be the way they perform in the boardroom, uh, the way they perform day to day when they're sitting at their desk, Uh, the way they perform in their daily life, the way they connect with their family, with their kids. Uh, And we look at that holistically. And I think that's one of the most unique things about Laird and Gabby and why people look to them as these kind of pillars of success because they are high performers in many areas. They've got successful businesses. They've both achieved a lot in sport. Uh, They're still extremely healthy and fit. And they also connect really well with their friends and their family So uh, they have what what we tend to call extreme balance, or they're at least seeking that. And and that's, you know, not just being a high performer in sport and neglecting all their areas of your life or in business or in whatever category that you uh, consider. So a lot of the modalities that we use in there, we we use obviously Laird's deep water pool training, which is a very unique thing that he's he's developed over the years, uh, originally to improve his surfing and his breath holding for surfing, and then has now evolved as his fitness um, system, uh, the breathing that we have that we've developed in through a few different platforms. And then, um, in the recovery, we have a lot of different things and we, we use a lot of 
hot and cold exposures, uh, saunas and ice baths, particularly uh, for recovery, but also for holistically as a part of the whole system. But those are some of the things you'd see if you watched from the outside uh, at an XPT experience. Sure. And all of that, a lot of that resonates with me. And it's something that we've talked about in the Fit Insider site and newsletter. We wrote about it in the context of the high performance lifestyle where self mastery is really this, this evolution of like self care. So if this, the entry level is that, that wellness is you're kind of taking care of yourself and you're being mindful and maybe you're journaling and doing all those things and maybe yoga, the, the, the evolution of that into self mastery, I think is really embodied by XPT and what you all are trying to accomplish. Um, it's something that again, personally resonates, but when you look at the, the Instagram account and watch some of the videos and the trainings, it really is next level. Um, as a consumer, if I were to partake in that, like, what am I buying? So what are the products that are being sold and, and what would the experience look like? So if you start at the top where XPT began, it, it's the retreats and we call them the experiences. And that's really our, our pinnacle product. And that's where you come and you spend three days with the XPT team with Laird and Gabby and you get plugged into the lifestyle. Uh, and we'll we'll continue to do those things because that's still where we can spend the most time and impact people. However, what we realize really quickly is is there's we only do a handful of those a year. They're a relatively small group. Uh, we max them out at about thirty participants, and we do five or six a year. Uh, and not everybody can fly out to Kauai and spend five days, take five days out of their schedule. So. We've created a handful of different products that are more accessible and scalable so that we can continue to impact people as well as continue to impact the people who are coming to the experiences because a lot of them realize how powerful the XBT lifestyle is, but then don't know how to apply that when they go back to their New York City apartment and they don't have the things we have in Kauai. So that's why we've created a handful of other um, offerings throughout our um, system. So in our the biggest thing that we created from the beginning was, or when I first started was a certified coach network. So we have, because the methods of XPT are aiming at achieving high performance, we can teach those things to personal trainers, yoga instructors, military operators, doctors, physical therapists. We have a, a wide demographic of professionals. I'll call them fitness professionals, but not just trainers, uh, health and fitness professionals, I guess is a better term. Uh, so we have, trainer certifications and that's three different certifications that we offer that are based one that's based on all of our modalities and then two that are more specialized uh, and those are in person as well as online we have some that are both we have some that are all in person and some that are all online uh, and then we have one-on-one uh, -on -one training so you can actually connect with trainers uh, digitally so we have virtual training that we've offered so that we can help people connect with our certified coach network and actually be able to scale these things into their life. Uh, and then we also have an app, the XPT life app, where uh, obviously the easiest way for users to connect, to jump on, there's guided breathing sessions in there for basically every scenario you could imagine from morning routines to bedtime routines, to pre-workout energizers, to some of the most impactful, I believe is the down regulation, calming, um, anti-anxiety type protocols. Uh, but we have that stuff in the XPT app that is available um, in the app store. So those are a handful of the different product categories that we've created to help connect with users no matter where they are. Because obviously everyone can't fly to Kauai with us and spend five days uh, living the XPT lifestyle. Yeah, to that point, and one of the things that I wanted to touch on is uh, who do you look at as the target audience and, and how big do you think that demo is? Yeah, I would say the, I think the misperception, uh, it's not necessarily a misperception, but I guess because of our, because of how attracted elite performers are to the concepts of XPT, what a lot of people tend to see is professional athletes, military special forces. And, and we work with a lot of those populations uh, because of the modalities that we use and how easily it is to connect to those people. But the reality is most of the people that we actually impact from a, uh, a large scale perspective are anybody who's seeking a more holistic look at fitness and performance. So the people who come to our events are, are typically, uh, or the people who come to our retreats are typically 
uh, business people, executives uh, who are just looking for the next level of overall performance, whether that's, and a lot of them, I think a lot of the people that connect with XPT also are the ones who are starting to realize that fitness is not about checking the box of showing up and sweating for 45 minutes, three times a week. Uh, there's certainly a place for that in the fitness industry. And it's a great step in the right direction if you've spent the past 10 years sitting on the couch. But what a lot of people realize and, and where those people run into plateaus is there's only a, it's a very short lifespan for you to do that. And then people get bored or people start to plateau and they either stop doing it or they tend to graduate into the, the higher levels of, of what I'll call holistic performance. Um, and that's really why I think XPT is positioned to impact so many people because that's a very, I believe that that's where the, the industry is headed. As you mentioned, and, and, you know, you talked about this in the high performance lifestyle, but we're seeing this with uh, from everybody from the biohacking community um, to even the, the more competitive fitness offerings. You know, though we, we've seen CrossFit explode and the obstacle course racing, a lot of those things have exploded in the past 15 to 20 years because it's giving some people something to train for and something more to be a part of and believe in than I go to the gym and do X class for 30 minutes a couple of days a week and I get sweaty and I go home. Um, so that's why I think. Uh, we're positioned to be able to really connect with the people who are seeking more. And especially with, if you're looking at the the market today with two thirds of that being millennials and Gen Z, this is a population that's looking for more than more connection to the brand and to the lifestyle than checking the box of just showing up and, and moving a couple weights around or running on a treadmill. Yeah, I think it's a great point and, and certainly an opportunity, a white space to continue to assert yourself in the XPT brand. You know, it's something that you want to believe in, I think, and also that addresses these multiple areas of your life. Is there anything that you look at now talking about that white space, but also things that exist in terms of whether it's brands or protocols that you like in XPT to or, or contrast it with just to give people even a more complete picture of it? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I would say there are a few different brands that I could like an XBT to, but only in components of them. You know, I think it, from the the breathing and the app space, I would almost say that XPT is similar to something like Calm or Headspace, where we're we're trying to capture the market of people looking for ways to be mindful, way to, ways to manage negative emotions, uh, ways to manage stress. But then from the, the more extreme and the connection standpoint, I think, or performance, you know, I, I think a company like Exos has done a phenomenal job of, of helping to take athletic performance and the concepts, you know, I think the high performance lifestyle really evolved from athletic performance. We, we've been doing this with athletes for a long time, the high performance model of training, which is not physical training. It, it encompasses the physical and the mental and nutrition and recovery and sleep and all of these other components. And that's something that I think is just beginning to transition into uh, the more mass market. Uh, but it's not, it's not a new concept. And Exos did a really good job of transitioning that from what was athletes performance and moving it more into the big space that they operate now in, which is corporate wellness. Um, however, because they're more in that corporate wellness space, I, I would say where XPT is positioned to head is more CrossFit. I think the people who do XPT, they identify with it. And that's where, uh, that's where I think, that's the direction I think that XPT is heading is more the identity of, of this is the lifestyle that we live. Uh, and that's why it's called the XPT life. Uh, and that's where I think, at least initially, the people who are around the brand um, tend to connect with. So I know that was a, a handful of different things, but those are some of the areas that I would compare where we're headed. And we kind of play in each of these spaces. You know, we still have an arm in, in the elite performance. We're still speaking with special forces, military groups and groups doing research studies and, and all of those kind of things to continue to push 
the elite elite performance higher and then learn from those things that we can scale down to to mass market um, again as well as connecting with everyday people through the app who are just looking to to deal with stress and anxiety and do a little bit of breath work in the morning to help them calm down I think it was it was super helpful and, and paints a very clear picture and, and certainly um, tease up the opportunity very nicely within the landscape. Uh, one thing that I didn't intend to talk about, but comes to mind when you're talking about the opportunity and, and what you're doing, uh, just what's your take in general on uh, education within the fitness realm? You know, there's, we've looked at and thought a lot about, um, you know, how personal training has kind of evolved beyond um, the traditional certifications. And now you look at the gap between in-person training and, and the transition to online. Um, and th- a lot of standalone brands, XPT certainly have their own certifications. So now you have these like pillar certifications that different folks have, um, but there's not a ton of cohesion ac- across the board. Just like, how do you think about fitness education, training trainers, and even how that applies at XPT? I think as a whole, I think it's very disjointed. Uh, that's one of the biggest challenges. I mean, that's why I got into the education side of this this industry because I was just around so many trainers, and, and most of the people I was around at least had bachelor's degrees, if not master's degrees, in exercise science. So these are the more educated of the trainers out there uh, because that's working in sports performance. That's the the norm, but as if the fitness industry as a whole, that's certainly not the norm. Um, so I think that there's. There are so many really good education um, systems out there or certifications or, or trainers out there that are teaching their own, their own things, but it's so disjointed. It's really hard for trainers to know where to go. Uh, and I think probably the biggest problem is that there's no governing body or there's no gold standard. Uh, and it's a very low barrier to entry in order to be educated. You know, they're, they're, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have more clients or make more money or, or be more successful. The more certifications you have, it's almost as if the people who are spending their time getting certified uh, and de- obtaining the education are missing out on these people who are just constantly out there trying to get clients. But I do see that as we shift into this, and I, I believe that as the the high performance lifestyle, as as you called it, uh, as that becomes more and more paramount in the industry, you have to be a more educated trainer to do that and to, to understand it. So I think that's where, you know, if you look at the education from XPT, what we currently offer, uh, I tend to tell people that it's not the first step for a trainer. You know, if there's, there's a lot you need to learn as a trainer to be able to understand what we teach at XPT. Um, it's great if you can learn those things in sync, you know, if you're learning how to be a really effective trainer, as well as incorporate the breath work and the mindset, I think that that's what's going to get you to the next level. But a lot of times early on in the training, most trainers don't even know how to do the basics. Well, um, so I think that that's, that's really where we position ourselves. We certainly don't say that we are what everything that people need to know about training, you know, you need to be a qualified trainer, really in order to understand what we do and where it fits into the scope of training for different clients. That's where I think overall as the, the education side of the industry it is very disjointed. And I, but I do see that as an opportunity with some of these brands, you know, specifically with XPT that we can help people to, we can not only help trainers by educating them, but then, you know, that, that's ultimately what I looked at when I first started with XPT was, How can we create an educated network of trainers and coaches who can really understand how to optimize people's health and performance, as well as create a slightly more educated user who understand the importance of optimizing the entire spectrum of health and performance, not this, and then connect those two people together. And that's what we're really trying to do through XPT. And that's why we have these two segments of our business, which is coaches, health and fitness professionals, and those who are seeking personal optimization. Yeah, it's it's super smart and, and much needed, I think. We, you've seen it a lot of different times in, in different industries where you kind of target the the higher end and see how that applies and then take those learnings as it trickles down into different product offerings. And it sounds very similar to, to what's happening in XPT. Um, and kind of pivoting here, one thing I wanted to talk about, given that 
Uh, part of the business was doing the in-person retreats and trainings. Um, obviously, COVID-19 has impacted not only the fitness industry, but the world more broadly. Um, how has that changed what, what's happening on the ground at XPT and kind of how much has that pushed the technology piece even more? Yeah, I mean, I think we've been, I think we're fortunate that the combination of digital, digital and physical has always been a part of the plan and the infrastructure at FitLab as well as XPT. So uh, we've always been kind of positioning ourselves to be able to scale through digital. So so we already had the app and the digital, some of the training certifications uh, have been online for quite some time now. um, And we're continuing to make improvements to those things and uh, seeing more opportunity to develop those even further. Uh, But I think that, that's always been the way that we've been looking to scale XPT. Uh, and it certainly hindered our in-person uh, experiences for during that time. We obviously didn't run any in-person experiences and we're looking at other ways that we can connect with people. Uh, we're actually going to be launching a virtual experience uh, in July because we, we had to cancel our in-person. Um, so we're going to, I think a lot of the magic that people get from the XPT experience, the, the community, the education, uh, the connection to the people we have in our, in our network. Uh, we've got a team of advisors that are some of the best people in the industry, the, the greatest minds in, in breathing and movement from Patrick McEwen and Dr. Kelly Starrett to, um, we just brought in a new advisor, Paul DeToro, uh, who's, whose biography uh, just makes you feel like you, you haven't done anything with your life. And uh, <clears throat> Dr. Andy Galpin, who's our exercise physiology advisor. So one of the big benefits we have through that network of experts, and, and again, this is how XPT was created because Laird brought these people in as friends. And those are the people who said, well, what if we did this? Well, what if we tried that? Well, what if we did this after we did the ice bath and we did this breathing? And that's how XPT evolved. Um, so we're trying to bring that connection to people again, who can't come out to Kauai or, or in these current times, nobody can go anywhere. So uh, we're going to be testing out some virtual experiences to see if we can find more ways to connect with people uh, digitally. So it's certainly continued to push that forward and, and shown the importance of it, but I don't think it's changed much from our overall vision and what we've been trying to do because the digital and physical has been a part of the plan uh, from day one. Yeah. One of the things that I think is really interesting and you kind of touched on it there was, you know, the opportunity for not only Laird to like grow this network and now bring in the advisors, bring in folks like FitLab and yourself, but it's really a bunch of folks who are incredibly interested in and passionate about this saying like, well, how do we get better? And how do we continue to push the envelope and, you know, expand this protocol and reach more people? And as you look ahead and think about growing the brand, if we were to jump ahead, you know, call it three or five years, what does the company look like? Are there plans for, you know, physical locations and studios? Is it more digital, some combination of both? Just what are those long-term goals? It's certainly a combination of both. Uh, we, we, we have some plans right now. We're working on expanding the app and the capabilities of the app. Um, we're, we're building out a much more robust breathing app. Um, so the digital side, as well as a few more digital certifications, and uh, we want to have some more digital education offerings because I think the the certification thing is important for trainers, but it also tends to have average consumers think that this isn't something for them. So we want to have more consumer offerings because we do feel that the, the information that we're sharing, you know, let's, let's use our performance breathing certification as an example. This stuff can literally change people's lives. And, and we've seen it from, from average users like my 62 year old mother to the most elite special forces operators from every branch of uh, special forces. So we've seen that stuff have such a huge impact and we want to make sure we can continue to get that information out to people. Uh, So those are some of the offerings we'll continue to have from an education perspective so that it connects with the users who are just looking to learn a little more about breathing and how they can use it on a day-to-day basis, as well as when they work out. Um, so that's some of the digital side that we're continuing to build, but we are going to be launching uh, studios as well, probably uh, in 2021. And we're very excited about that. And, and that the really great thing about that is I think we're, we are really well positioned to help people 
live that high performance lifestyle all the time. I think a lot of trainers, physical trainers, and I know this from the time I spent working with athletes, we struggle to figure out how we can impact people in the, all the hours that they spend, not with us, the other 23 hours a day that they're not in the gym with us. Uh, and we know that if we're ultimately, if we're going to have an impact on them, we need to be able to impact those, them in those areas. And because of the connection we can build with the digital and physical, I believe we are positioned to really help guide people through that journey and give them things that they can do from breathing to nutrition, to stretching, to mobility, to uh, ice baths and recovery and cold showers and all of the things that are a part of the XPT life. Uh, but we can provide them a very easy way to be involved and stay engaged uh, when they're in the studio and out of the studio. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, a lot to look forward to and, and certainly a lot on the roadmap. Uh, selfishly, I, I hope that I end up being, you know, living somewhere near an XPT studio, wherever that may be. Um, but as we, we look to wrap up here um, and certainly keeping tabs on what you guys are working on, can you tell listeners where they can learn more about XPT and maybe how to get in touch? Yeah, absolutely. The, everything for XPT can be found on our website, which is xptlife.com. Um, we're active on social media, uh, primarily on, on Instagram, which is also XPT life. Uh, so we post a lot of events and upcoming everything upcoming through those two platforms. Uh, so those are the best ways. And then obviously, as I mentioned, the, the XPT app, which is XPT life is available on iOS only right now. Um, but that's a great way for anybody who's thinking like, Hey, this sounds really cool. How do I get started today? Um, there's a whole bunch of breathing audio recorded guided sessions in there for free. So you can download that and actually just get guided by Laird, by Gabby, by myself, by some of our master coaches, uh, through a whole bunch of different breathing for specific scenarios. So, um, that's another way you can get connected as well. Perfect. Listen, PG, that was awesome. Learn more about XPT. I appreciate you making time to join us today. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks everyone for listening to today's episode. For more from Fit Insider, visit insider.fit.co and subscribe to our weekly newsletter for insights and analysis on the business of fitness and wellness. Then go ahead and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. See you next time.